So hi, Microbe Hunter here, and uh, I got a question concerning about the sterilization of petri dishes and laboratory equipment, possibly also culture media. I'll read out the question and then I'll give you my take on it. I have a doubt. I've been investigating quite a lot on how to culture bacteria and I have a dilemma. I do not have access to the hot air method for sterilizing my petri dish and I cannot use anything in the kitchen to do my, quote, weird experiments. So I'm wondering if there could be an alternative method, for example, a non-toxic substance, for example, to sterilize a glass petri dish. Fortunately, Oliver has said that he's an expert in everything related to bacteria. So I need your help, please. Well, I think I don't remember that I've said anything like this before, but thank you anyway for the, you know, for the nice feedback. Um, yeah, concerning the growth of bacteria sterilization and so on, I have mixed feelings. Um, I'm not happy um, when folks culture their own bacteria because essentially you don't know what you're culturing. Um, yeah, but uh, that's a different topic. I've already made videos on that. And uh, strictly speaking, if you're culturing bacteria where you don't know what they are at high concentrations, you're already at an elevated uh, biohazard level, uh, which actually requires a permission. But I'm going to talk here um, about the sterilization, um, about the killing of, of bacteria. So first of all, in your question, you ref re reference to the so-called the hot air method. Um, that is only one way of uh, sterilizing it. Normally what you do in a laboratory, or that's at least what I've used, is, is to use a so-called an autoclave or a steam pressure cooker, which is not hot air. So I'll be talking about those two things here. First of all, if what you can do is, is you can take a glass Petri dish, of course glass, not plastic, otherwise it's going to melt, obviously. You take a glass Petri dish, you close the Petri dish and you put it into your oven, your baking oven, and you go up, let's say, to 200 degrees centigrade and you basically bake the glass Petri dish um, for maybe, I don't know, for an hour or so. Um, this is the so-called the dry sterilization method and, and um, you have to go up to that temperature because there are certain bacterial spores and fungal spores or fungi that are kind of heat, heat resistant and dry resistant and you have to go up really high with the temperature to actually kill off those um, as well. Of course, this means that you cannot have any culture medium um, inside the glass petri dish because um, as soon as there is water present, the temperature the water is going to evaporate and the temperature will not go up uh, much above 100 degrees centigrade. So it's going to be completely dry, no culture medium, um, just glass petri dish or glass labware. You close it, you heat it up for an hour um, to, let's say, 200 degrees, 220 degrees, I've even uh, heard somewhere. Um, and then you have to let it cool down slowly because if you cool it down too quickly, then the air inside the petri dish is going to contract because it's cooling and it's going to suck in air from the outside, which is again going to contaminate the inside of the petri dish. So that's the reason why you have to cool it down slowly. Most of the time, um, when I was still working in the lab, we've used an autoclave and an autoclave is uh, a pressure cooker. And the pressure cooker will go up to uh, around 121 degrees centigrade. And if you leave it there for, let's say, 20 minutes to 30 minutes, then this is also hot enough to kill off the heat resistant spores because uh, it's moist. Uh, therefore, the proteins will denature. Um, in the dry method, um, it's like this, that uh, the spores are quite, uh, because it's dry, they're kind of dry resistant and there's a little water there, so it, it's more stable. But uh, when it's moist, uh, when there's steam there and under steam pressure, then even the lower temperature of 121 degrees centigrade, Celsius centigrade will be enough to actually kill the spores, provided that you autoclave it for around uh, half an hour. Um, and this also has the advantage that this way you're also able to culture, um, to, to sterilize uh, culture media, okay, which contains uh, water. Also here you have to cool it down slowly, otherwise uh, if you um, cool it down too quickly, this not only reduces the heat exposure, but also has the problem that again the culture medium might overcook because the pressure is falling too quickly. So don't take the pressure away too quickly, otherwise it's going to overboil if you have a culture medium. Um, if you just sterilize the, the Petri dish uh, without uh, um, any culture media, um, then uh, yeah, you just have it in there. So this means you have to have all the water in, of course, the pressure cooker. So this is, uh, these are two different uh, methods here. Um, now, another thing is, uh, and that's what we were asking, what about certain chemicals? Um, so first of all, if you want to uh, disinfect, um, right now I talked about uh, disinfecting and sterilizing it uh, before uh, you're actually, uh, pre before preparing uh, a medium. But what happens if you already have media, uh, bacteria growing on the Petri dish um, and you want to kill them for disposing them? Well, then um, you can, of course, also use an autoclave. That's what we've used a lot. But you can, of course, also add certain chemicals to them. Um, 
during the lab we've never done this uh, because we don't want to mess around with chemicals uh, but if you want to do that something that is quite effective is hydrogen peroxide H2O2 but we are never using this because it's way too dangerous okay you get this stuff into your eyes and and you're in trouble um, so uh, but uh, base, nowadays these days many of the de disinfectants that you can buy for hands because in the corona times there are lots of disinfectants many of them will contain around I think 3% hydrogen peroxide um, and anything more I definitely would not use okay Okay, um, so because uh, it's going to take off your skin if you touch it. Okay, um, hydrogen peroxide is highly oxidizing, um, and this means that depending on the certain bacteria that you uh, you pour it over, then you will have oxygen gas forming. So it starts to foam because some bacteria have an enzyme called catalase um, in it, uh, which actually breaks down the hydrogen peroxide. So you have to be aware that uh, the hydrogen peroxide also loses effectiveness. So you pour the stuff over the petri dish with the bacteria, you let it soak in for some time um, and until it's diffused all the way through the culture medium and into all of the parts and then this should disinfect it as well. Um, the problem with that is um, it's uh, for health reasons, <laughs> obviously. Um, you don't want to inhale this stuff if there are aerosols um, forming because it's hydrogen peroxide. So it's very aggressive. Um, uh, it attacks metals as, as well. It's highly oxidizing. Um, so for this reason, we've never used this actually in the laboratory. We've always used uh, the autoclaving method. Um, yeah, um, if you've got, uh, if you just want to sterilize your petri dishes and glassware with uh, th these types of disinfectants, then um, okay, what are you gonna do? You you pour it in and it's in there. You pour it out and then there is still a liquid in there. So you gotta remove the liquid anyway, right? So what are you gonna do? You've gotta wait maybe yeah, until it evaporates. So you you see what I mean? It's um, it's not very practical. And my general advice is. Um, I know this was not your question, is, is there's so many things to observe <laughs> yeah, using a microscope. Uh, it's also safe things. Uh, there's no need to grow bacteria. Yeah, I have to tell you that because um, you don't know what you're growing, honestly. And, and uh, yeah, it's, it's uh, probably not worth uh, the risk. And also you're in an elevated uh, um, yeah, a safety category, biohazard category um, in any case. Okay, um, so, so not so toxic substances. Well, it's got to be toxic. Otherwise, it's not able to kill cells. I, I gotta tell you that, okay? Um, so that's why you don't want to mess around with this stuff and uh, take care. Wish you all the best. Happy micro hunting as always. See you around next time. Bye bye.